Andrew Schultz, Joey Chestnut, Joanne Catherine in our studio audience. I'm Greg Gutfeld, and I love you, America. <laughs> interviews Hillary Clinton behind closed doors just weeks before she's expected to officially become the Democratic nominee for president. Good evening. I'm Laura Engel in for Julie Banderas, and this is the Fox Reports. Clinton voluntarily traveling to FBI headquarters in Washington for hours of questioning. Investigators are digging deeper into her use of a private email server during her time as Secretary of State. The long-standing question, did that put classified information at risk? The FBI has already interviewed some of Clinton's former aides, and the investigation has cast a shadow over her campaign by raising concerns among supporters that Clinton could be indicted before the general election. She maintains she did nothing wrong. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin, live in Washington. Jennifer, Clinton finally spoke today. Do we know what she had to say? Well, she spoke, um, not to us, but to, for about eight minutes to meet the press's Chuck Todd. He spent most of that interview, and this interview took place after she met with the FBI this morning. He spent most of that interview asking her about her husband's meeting with the Attorney General Loretta Lynch on Monday. It was a short chance meeting uh, that uh, uh, occurred, and they did not discuss the Department of Justice's review. And I know that some, nonetheless, have viewed the meeting in a different light, and both the Attorney General and my husband have said they would not do it again. And the bottom line for me uh, is I respect the professionalism and integrity of the officials at the Department of Justice handling this process. Clinton would not uh, respond to reports that are breaking tonight from unnamed sources to uh, uh, to uh, CNN suggesting that uh, that the Justice Department has already decided not to indict her. That seems a bit premature given the fact that the FBI only uh, spoke to Hillary Clinton today. Laura. Right. In just those three and a half hours, Jennifer, who was at this FBI meeting today? Well, we don't know for certain because uh, the campaign has not released the names of those who are present. We do know that her lawyer, David Kendall, was present. The New York Times is reporting that Cheryl Mills was also present. She's a longtime advisor. She was chief of staff to Hillary Clinton when she was secretary of state. Uh, we saw Cheryl Mills here at, the ha at her residence, at Hillary Clinton's residence, after the FBI meeting. Uh, what's curious about that is that Cheryl Mills herself was questioned by the FBI um, not too long ago about her knowledge of the private email server. Uh, we also know from the New York Times that there were at least uh, eight members of the FBI and Justice Department who were in the room questioning Hillary Clinton. You know, Laura. Jennifer, you have had such a great vantage point during all of this. What do you make of the timing? <laughs> well, look at the timing of, of this meeting. Um, it is taking place on a holiday weekend. I think that is not that is by design, not uh, by chance. If you were the Hillary Clinton campaign, you would want uh, this to happen during a news cycle when the rest of America is at their barbecues and focusing on other things during this Fourth of July weekend. I think uh, that is not a coincidence. Um, um, I think the timing is uh, good for the campaign if they can wrap things up before the convention. Um, it's also notable that, well, it's not clear if it was long planned or hastily arranged after President Bill Clinton's impromptu meeting with the Attorney General in Arizona last Monday. Today's meeting was a well-guarded secret. Her campaign wouldn't answer phone calls or messages for 24 hours starting yesterday. The first statement we received was from her spokesman, Nick Merrill, at 12.21 p.m. today after she was already back her, at her house from the FBI meeting. Uh, he said, quote, Secretary Clinton gave a voluntary interview this morning about her email arrangements while she was secretary. She is pleased to have had the opportunity to assist the Department of Justice in bringing this review to a conclusion. Out of respect for the investigative process, she will not comment further on her interview. But, of course, she did comment further. She went on MSNBC just a little while ago. Um, she didn't uh, reveal what she told the FBI, but she did talk about uh, having been there today. 
Back to you, Laura. All right, Jennifer, thanks so much. Every day, week, and now weekend gets more and more interesting. Thanks so much for that report. And Hillary Clinton now hoping to move on from, let's just call it a rough week. Her husband, former President Bill Clinton, sparked controversy when he met with Attorney General Loretta Lynch on a private plane at the height of the email probe. And the Republican-led Benghazi Committee released an unflattering final report on the administration's handling of the 2012 terror attack. The report says the administration cooked up the claim that an anti-Muslim video sparked the violence and adds there is no hard evidence to support it. Clinton, as Secretary of State, referenced the video in the only statement issued from the administration on the night of the attack. Four Americans were killed in this attack, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. Meantime, Republicans are reacting to the fallout from Hillary Clinton's headlines this week. Brian Yenis here with all those details. The Republican National Committee um, has a lot to say. They do. The Republican National Committee and Donald Trump both weighing in on today's FBI interview. And they say that it really just reiterates that Hillary Clinton is unfit to be president. And it emphasizes the seriousness of the criminal investigation into her private email server. Secondly, the RNC is launching a scathing attack on the credibility of the FBI's investigation after Attorney General Loretta Lynch privately met with President and Bill Clinton on her plane. The meeting sparking widespread criticism given that Lynch is the head of the Justice Department, which is leading the investigation against Mrs. Clinton. The RNC chairman, Reince Priebus, stating, quote, that the FBI wanted her for questioning reinforces her central role in the deliberately creating a culture which put her own political ambitions above State Department rules and jeopardize our national security. When the Attorney General meets secretly with Bill Clinton just days before Hillary interrogation is conducted discreetly over a holiday weekend, it raises serious concerns about special treatment. Meanwhile, the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump, is attacking Mrs. Clinton and the investigation, tweeting hours ago, quote, it is impossible for the FBI not to recommend criminal charges against Hillary Clinton. What she did was wrong. What Bill did was stupid. He went, then went on to, to tweet, it was just announced by sources that no charges will be brought against crooked Hillary Clinton. Like I said, the system is totally rigged. The Department of Justice has not said yet whether charges will be filed, Laura. A lot to get to, and Brian, we're starting to get more details about what we can expect uh, from this year's Republican National Convention. There have been few details, Laura, and with little more than two weeks left before the convention, we know very little about what to expect, and that's different than past years. These things are well planned in advance, and critics point out that's because Republican parties, well, their rising stars and their leaders are unprecedentedly choosing not to attend, pointing to Donald Trump's historically high unfavorability numbers. Trump tweeted, though, Friday, quote, the speaker slots at the Republican convention are totally filled with a long waiting list of those that want to speak Wednesday release. He's told the New York Times his children will speak, and he's hoping that he can uh, bring on many non-politicians, such as celebrities and sports athletes like Serena Williams and Don King. So we shall see. Unpredictable like the candidate himself. <laughs> Indeed. Well, that promises to be a pretty interesting week for all. Of us. No doubt. No we'll doubt. Watch and see what will happen. All right, Brian Yenis, Take thanks so much for being here. And right now, we are learning more about what happened after authorities stormed a cafe in Bangladesh, bringing a 10 hour standoff to a deadly conclusion. What happened next as we get new details on the people the terrorists targeted, killing over thousands. What happened next as we get new details on the people the terrorists targeted, including one American? Plus, Brexit backlash boiling over, thousands of protesters calling for a referendum redo. That and more still ahead, as Fox reports tonight. My only job at Fox is to... My only job at Fox is to keep company with heroes. And what I see of these youngsters makes me proud to be an American. These are guys who have been remarkably well trained. They're better equipped, better led, better trained than any military force in history. It's the best military any nation's ever had. 
I wouldn't trade you a billion dollars for the guys I led in combat in Vietnam. These are heroes, and they're remarkable. They can go from high-octane adrenaline in a gunfight to instantly, that fast, looking after women and children. The kinds of things that I've seen them do inspires me that we really are a great country. Share your pride on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hashtag Proud American. You want to see something?